Hi, uh, Jerry Cowley. You're canvassing again in Newport, actually, yeah? Yes, I am, Molly, and I'm getting on fantastic. Getting a great response from people, as you can see. Um, as you know, Ollie. You've had experience with this before. I've had plenty of experience, Ali. I went to 1994 yeah. in the, in the Parkland by-election yeah. and I got a commitment for phase two of my old general hospital as the best way to orthopedics. And I pulled out then a week before the election because I got that commitment from Albert Reynolds at that time. Yeah. And then in 2002, we had the phase two, but we didn't have the orthopedic unit. So I went again for that and general neglect me all. I was the first election with 9,000 votes after transfers over 11,000. And then I went again 2007, but the blue tide got me. And then again, I went uh, for Labour 2011, but that didn't work out because really Labour left me because what I had bought into wasn't what I got. And after that, I'm fierce happy to be going as an independent. I was going to say, what, what made you deaf enough to try it again? <laughs> <laughs> well, necessity is a mother of invention to say, but as you know yourself, it's very hard working our health service without trying to do something about it. And I decided, rather than see all these people lit up in trolleys, that we should divert, the, rebalance the budget so that people can stay off the trolley. So in other words, to ensure the services are there, to stop people from having to go into hospital in the first place and ensure their early discharge by having services at home. And that's what it's all about. And do you have a plan to do this? Well, I do. The plan is the plan is that we're running into a balance of power situation. Yep. And I tend to do what Healy Ray did for Kerry and what Tony Gregory did for Dublin. A couple of hundred million wouldn't go astray for Mayo. But in particular, I would like to see the money that is there redistributed. And that's not an impossibility. And if it is a thing that that is done, well then you will see GPs like us be able to use our very uh, celebrated uh, talents to uh, ensure that people don't have to go to the hospital. For instance, our surveillance unit, as you know it, has 90, 90 people employed there. And in fact, if I got the support from the hospital with the consultants and so on, and the drugs and the staff, I could treat all those people who are on trolleys with pneumonia at the moment. I could treat them in our own community, and you could do the same thing, Ollie White. No problem to you whatsoever, if we were properly supported. So we always done it? We always did it, and we can do it again. Mm. But what has happened is, they have taken the supports away from us. Our supports are down by 50%. There's no supports for house calls anymore, and there's no succession either. So the 17 areas in Mayo is going to lose their doctor because supports have gone down so much, and there is no succession rights for anybody replacing us. So they will end up uh, in a situation where they have to immigrate. And such is the situation for so many doctors more than half the doctors in, in Mayo are over 55 years of age. You and I are on the retirement train. So obviously, uh, things are going to get worse. So we have to do something. And also our hospitals. We need basic service in our hospitals. I did it for orthopedics. I started the campaign in 89. When I left 2007, uh, uh, the doll, uh, we had orthopedics. And I can tell you this, I had rheumatoids in the bag as well, but nobody was watching the ball after that, so we lost that. So it's all to do. Any other issues around here? For Mayo. It's well, for Mayo, there. the big issue, of course, is not Airport. It's not been properly supported. Uh, Shannon has run ahead in funding. We need a tax-free zone, and there's no reason why that shouldn't happen. We are a sub-economic area. Uh, obviously, this will not interfere with competition law because it's just going to affect Mayo and parts like that. So there's no reason why it shouldn't happen under EU uh, membership uh, aid drawdown. It should happen, and there's no reason why it couldn't happen. And I would say to everybody, We've only got three weeks. It's a cynical exercise just to give us three weeks for this election. But I'm asking people, I need your vote. And just because I don't come to your door and ask you for it doesn't mean I don't want it. I want your vote so badly. I want your vote so that those four people who have been with us for the last nine years, government TDs, uh, can be diluted somewhat. I think, to say the least, we're oversubscribed with Fine Gael. We need an independent in there like I was in 2007 to hold the government to account, to embarrass the government when needed, and ensure that Mayo gets its just dessert. So I'm asking you for your number one vote. Even though I don't call to your door, please give me your number one vote. Thank you very much.